thank you for being here, first of all, in this beautiful facility. What I would like to do, I have 20 minutes or so, um, and I would like to just you know, throw some data at you. Susie asked me to talk about the state of the luxury hotel industry in the US, just very briefly, and then give you our insights into the SPA STAR program, which we've been running for a couple of years now. Before I start, Mr. Berger, happy birthday. Um, I was not scolded, but it was requested last night that I don't talk so fast all the time. Um, I find this really fascinating, so I get really into it. All the slides will be available, as always, on our website, hotelnewsnow.com. You have, I believe this is also on the memory stick, is that right, the, the presentation? Of course, like any good speaker, I changed it completely last night. So what you have in your, uh, the, the memory stick stuff is still good. It's just that last night I had some inspiration after couple of gin and tonics up on the mountain. And uh, so what, what, you, what you'll see is going to be on the website is, uh, is going to be the latest and greatest. So when I arrived yesterday, and I'm sorry that I missed um, the first day, but I arrived to this, you know, which are blue building blocks and red balls. And I'm like, OK, this is all about innovation, apparently. So I wonder what this actually means. And probably you know, the best way to figure out if the Global Spa and Wellness Summit works is to see what people actually do with these building blocks and I was just kind of curious about that and I checked in and I walked back up and I saw indeed innovation when using these building blocks as a bed. <laughs> so it does indeed work. <laughs> so is it imagination, is it dreaming? <laughs> I don't know. Um, what I want to do very briefly is just tell you about the state of the luxury hotel industry. In a sense, I kind of feel like that little blue block. Like we are the foundation of you know, what you do out there. You can arrange our data any way you want. You may want to sleep on it at times, but hopefully you're going to use it with a little bit more action, so to speak. This is the state of the luxury US hotel industry for through the first quarter, 12 months ending, as if the year had ended in March. We have 305 hotels that we call luxury in the sample. And what you're seeing is life's pretty good. Occupancies are up, well up, you know, over 70% or so. Average room rates, you know, not bad, $260. The more interesting numbers are probably on the right-hand side here. You're seeing that the supply-demand imbalance in favor of demand. We're not building anything. There's just no money out there. Bankers are scared. And if they can invest something that has a 10-year lease or something that has a one-night lease, well, it turns out uh, they think that hotels are rather risky. So very little new supply. The demand number is still sort of a rebound number, which gives you occupancy increases. And we're finally seeing some very, very healthy pricing power. To say this slightly differently, what drives this industry is supply and demand. We have, for the first quarter of this year, sold more luxury hotel rooms than ever before. So recession, what recession? You know, the upper 1%, 10%, whatever you call that, is doing uh, very, very well. And we're profiting from that. There's a lot going on, so let me just talk you through this. Take a deep breath. This is 12 months moving average supply and demand percent change. So this is not actual total number of rooms sold or total number of rooms built. This is just how many more rooms are we selling? That is, if the yellow line is above zero, or how many less rooms are we selling in some instances? So when the yellow line is below zero, or how many more rooms are we building when the red line is above zero? You're seeing that we're never actually taking rooms out of inventory. What's interesting to note on this chart is that the red line is coming way down, no new supply, and this line doesn't change very quickly, right? Because it takes probably 60 months from, I have a dream, to opening the doors. And that's going to be five years or so before we see some new luxury supply. At the same time, what's interesting, I think, is that in the 2009 downturn, luxury demand only dropped, what is that, you know, four and a half, five percent. Interesting. You know, so the 95 percent of demand for luxury rooms was still there. On the next chart that I'm overlaying, the yellow line stays exactly the same. I'm, leaving, I'm, I'm changing um, the axes on the left a little bit, but just trust me on this. The yellow line is exactly the same. What I'm overlaying here is how the changes in demand impact our pricing. As we say in German, yikes. This is not a good chart, because what you're seeing is that we had huge decreases in ADR to the tune of, call that 20% or so. And we're seeing that room rates have increased, again, with the increases in demand. 
But it's really not a rebound number because we're down 20, we're now up five, whoop de doo but that really doesn't buy you anything. We don't see a whole lot of pricing power. And why is that? Well, another way to say this is this. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the peak ADR for luxury hotels, which was December of 2008, $300. Fast forward to the trough, the bottom, how long did it take? 18 months. How much did we discount? 20%. Go forward another 18 months. Oh, we're only increasing eight, just to make the math easy, call that 10%. So the point of this chart is we're discounting at twice the pace of ADR increases. What's interesting is when you're in this down cycle, roughly at this point, and my colleagues, myself, stand on stage and saying, whoa, you're discounting a lot, guys. You're not going to get it back. The industry says, blah, blah. What do you know? You know, you sit in Nashville, Tennessee. You don't know anything. It's going to be a V-shaped recovery, right? We're taking it down, and then we're going to get it right back. Yeah, no, that's not the way it works. <laughs> this is the chart that shows you that that is not the way it works. And there will be another downturn. I hate to say this is a cyclical industry, always has been, always will. We will see discounts again. Next time, keep this in mind. You know, we're not going to get it back quite as quickly as we discount it. This is our forecast for the year. We're suggesting very healthy RevPAR numbers to the tune of 8% upper upscale, around 6% or so, driven by room rate increases. So it's not bad 5% room rate increases, you know, certainly well above the rate of inflation. But given that we were down 20, you know, we still need a little bit more oomph in that engine. So that was just how the hotel industry is doing, which is actually pretty well, thank you very much. You know, life's pretty good. Now let's talk about the spa star project, the spa star data that we've been collecting for a while. At STR, we collect three numbers, right? Rooms available, rooms sold, and rooms revenue. We get this from all chain affiliated hotels in the US and most of the chains globally. We take the data, make averages out of it, and the averages are ADR, occupancy, and, and ref par. If you don't know what ref par is, don't worry about it. If you know what it is, it really matters, right? So we're making these. <laughs> <laughs> We're making these three numbers. So when, when, when Susie and Mary and, and, and Icepa came to me and said, hey, can you, you know, collect the same data points for the spa industry? I said, sure, you know, what are your three metrics? And they said, no, we don't want three, we want 30. And I said, OK, well, let's you know, negotiate this. So we ended up with nine. So we broke out the spa into three big buckets, for the lack of a better term. There's the treatment side, there's the salon side, and there's the retail side. So we're asking on the treatment side, what's your, what's your total treatment revenue? How many treatments did you do? And then the utilization, uh, understanding how many hours were your treatment rooms open, and then how many hours were they used. We do the same thing on the salon services side, and then we have one retail number, just one catch-all number. This, you don't have to read. Don't worry about this. It's going to be on the web. I just want to show you that we're not making up the definition. The definitions are based on the Uniform system of accounts for the spa industry. Thanks to John Corby, we now know what we mean when we mean uh, treatment. So. Uh, you can read that up there. I just threw that in there to have it in the slideshow. Don't try to take notes on that one. Um, but so we're, we're comparing, we're trying to compare apples to apples. Yeah, and then, and then we just do the math. We're saying, okay, treatment room utilization rate, the hours used divided by the hours available. What's the average treatment rate? Well, that's just, you know, the total revenue of treatments divided by the number of treatments and so forth. So the math is actually so that I can actually figure it out. So it's not that hard. And we're doing it on the treatment side and we're doing it on the salon side as well. And I want to share with you a few of those metrics. All this data comes to us through either data feeds or through our handy dandy website, spa.str.com. And if you have more interest in the program, I urge you to check it out. All the information that you need is actually on it. And as you can see, we are generously supported by iSpa. Thank you, Lynn. So then your question is, how much is it? It's free, guys. How cool is that? <laughs> All I want is your data, seriously. That's what I do. I'm a data guy. I don't even want your money. I mean, eventually I want your money. But in the beginning, I really just want your data. So the idea is that you give me data, I give you data back, and everybody's happy. Now, the data that I give you at the beginning, we really have um, an OK coverage in the US. We have 30 luxury hotel spots participating for 10%, which is not great, but not bad, given where we're at. Um, if you just want to know the average for those 30, you give me your data, I give you that average back, done. 
note money changes hands, of course, then you're saying, well, that's interesting, but not quite actionable. Can you build me what's called a comp set, a competitive set? And the answer is yes, but then I want your money. So I want your data and your money if you want. So the idea is you make money, we make money. The competitive set data is going to be a lot more actionable, and you'll be able to see how your competing hotel spas are doing on pricing, and then I, you, you can say, okay, Am I too high? Am I too low? How are my utilization rates going? And you're going to have really, really actionable stuff. But that's when we'd like to be compensated. And uh, because iSpa has been so great, we try to be great back to iSpa and give you a discount if you're a member. And so, just real quick, thank you, Emma Call. Thank you, um, well, <laughs> Mia, I took you off the slide, but you're in the audience, so I put you back on the slide. Because, <laughs> you, <know, laughs> you know, so thank you for your <laughs> support at the beginning. Um, obviously, um, Andrew and, and Mary, as always, you know, professors, thank you very much. And uh, ISPA has been great. And of course, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak in this forum because you can make this happen. You know, you asked me, you know, four years ago, five years ago to say, do it. And I said, okay, I will. And I'm, fighting the battles internally in Hendersonville, Tennessee, y'all, because there's no money yet. And people are like, why are you doing this? And why are you going to Aspen? <laughs> I'm like, well, that's part of the job. Um, <laughs> but I need to show a couple of, I need to show my boss results. So it would be really nice if you could support me since I'm supporting you. <laughs> um, let me tell you a couple of data points and maybe then we can get the, uh, the dialogue going on getting my, my hands on your data. So. This is the average treatment rate for year end, 2006 to 2011. Uh, yeah. So it turns out there was a recession, I guess, like you might have heard. Um, it has impacted everybody, has impacted the hotel industry, has impacted the spa industry as well. So there have been you know, discounts for the lack of a better term. Obviously, this is a question of number of treatments. So total treatment revenue versus number of treatments is the math on this. So both of those numbers have fluctuated. But I think it's interesting to note, number one, we saw discounts. Number two, for the last two years, as the hotel industry is recovering on the spa side, we're not seeing increases in revenues. These the bars are exactly the same that I just showed you. I'm just showing you now average treatment rate versus average salon service rate. So, you know, kind of a dollar a minute, you know, if you have a manicure or so. But again, same pattern we're seeing in our sample size is that the, we, we saw discounts and now we're just kind of treading water when it comes to the, uh, the, the revenue side, the, the average revenue side. And, yeah, I guess we need some you know, innovation and imagination, maybe some dreaming, but how do we move these numbers up? Because, and this is now the percent change in those numbers that I showed you, but I'm overlaying here also how luxury ADRs are faring. Interesting, so there's some signs of, there's some signs of life, right? As I said earlier, on the luxury hotel ADR side, really nothing going on on the salon and on the treatment side, but is this maybe a leading indicator you know, of things to come? I hope it would be. You know, as we're able to extract more money from our guests on the hotel side, wouldn't they then be primed you know, to pay higher fees in the spas? Question mark. I mean, that's for you to figure out. You know? But it's going to be interesting to see if that is indeed a leading indicator. You know, for those of you not from the States, I, because my next slide references this, check it out on YouTube. There's just this, you know, uh, video of somebody calling, I have fallen, I can't get up, and... I have a question. Do you think Groupon and things like that have affected your, your understanding? Yes. I'm sorry, say the question again. Do you think things like Groupon has just come in in the last couple of years has affected your, your understanding? Is there an impact on the flash, of the flash sale sites on the treatment and the salon services number. Um, I'm not the operator. I would, from this stage, I would argue absolutely. But I don't know if you agree with that strong statement. You know, I think there has been a little bit of an, of an idea of a value erosion that we're, and we talked about it earlier, you know, you don't get it back as quickly. You know, it's gonna be interesting to see how quickly you can indeed move that needle. Um, I guess I throw that question back to you. Are you seeing that because of, you know, interesting, an interesting argument? Mm -hmm. Jan, can I ask one too? Do you think what we're finding is the, um, because the room rate's discounted, we're getting a different type of guest, which is why the treatment mm -hmm. standard isn't as high. Mm -hmm. 
so the, the argument is that because the room rate was discounted, there's a different client that's coming. The client isn't really ready to use the spa. Am I paraphrasing this correctly? So we're seeing that on the luxury side, we're actually seeing the return of the old traveler. You know, so they a lot more corporate, you know, a lot more high-end leisure. And so hopefully that would bode well going forward. I, I totally agree with you that I think that the customer mix had changed in eight, nine, ten-ish, you know, but now that we're coming out of that, hopefully we're seeing the reversal of that with auxiliary spend on the F and B side, on the golf side, on the spa side. Yes. Um, so anyways, you don't have to see this video, um, but I looked at this chart and that's the only comment that I had. You know, I've fallen and I can't get up. It looks like that we're, <laughs> you know, we're, we're seeing that the, that the treatment, the average treatment rate, you know, peaked nicely and then it's just kind of, you know, anemic, I guess is a technical term. You know, there's not a whole lot of signs, of, there's not a lot of signs of life on there. And it's going to be up, you know, to you, to the operators to figure out, you know, how can we move this back up? Or have we indeed permanently eroded the value equation through the flash there side? And I appreciate your comment that you're saying we don't play. You know, unfortunately, you're the lone caller in the desert. You know, and I applaud you, but there are a lot of people out there saying, no, this is, when you flash in the pan, this is what we have to do. You know, and therefore, I think we're seeing some impact of that. Um, the next three charts are line charts. They look exactly like this. So I'm starting with the average treatment rate per dollar, uh, so dollar per average treatment rate. This is the utilization rate of the treatment room. So it was interesting to hear the last uh, student group talk about, you know, they, they start with the ramp up of 20% utilization and they go to 55. I'm like, good for you. <laughs> that is awesome, man. I want to see that because, I mean, the, I, I buy your 20 number, you know, and I, maybe I'll buy a 30 number next year or a couple of years, but 55, damn, you're just, I love that student enthusiasm. Um, you know, obviously you can move that number, right? You can just not be open that long, you know, and maybe that was, you know, part of how they did it. <laughs> you know, they're just like, ha ha, they're smart to you students. You know, we just play with the denominator. So anyway, so that's, we've seen, you know, erosion on the utilization side. Of course, yeah, you want to sell more treatments, but maybe this is also an indicator to say, well, maybe we don't need quite as many staff. You know, maybe we change our op opening hour uh, uh, metrics. Um, the next two charts deal with exactly the same idea, just on the salon side. So this is average salon services rate, and you know, it looks exactly the same. So you know, we came down during the recession, and now we're suggesting, well. You know, the numbers move up and down in a very small range, you know, call that a dollar or two, but there's really not a whole lot that, that, that gives us an oomph to, you know, th this doesn't look like a trajectory this way. It looks more, you know, like a flat line. And it's going to be very, very interesting to see, you know, how, what, what can you imagine, you know, I said since that's the topic, what can you imagine to change this? I think that's going to be with us, you know, if we don't take action for a long, long time. Now what the action is, I'm not here to tell you. I'm not a consultant. We've got a ton of consultants out there. We'd love to tell you, you know, what to do and how to move this needle, how to move this line. And then lastly to um, wrap this up, the salon station utilization percentage, you know, is, well, the numbers are, you know, between 20 and 16, sorry, between 16 and 20 percent or so. The drop off hasn't been quite as sharp, which may be pointing at an interesting way, you know, to, to say, hey, maybe these people haven't gone away, or are they just coming? Is this line just steady because the discounts on the other slide were so steep? You know, that's kind of chicken and egg. That, that, is, that is a very big question. You know, is it a threat? Is it an opportunity? Does it mean, you know, we have to come up with new services, shorter services? You know, those are some interesting questions. And then lastly, what I did here, and this is first quarter data, so first quarter nine through first quarter of 12, I said, what's your total retail revenue? And I divided it by the number of treatments. And that number has moved a little bit. Obviously, this is where your profits are. So that number has to go back up. You know, and I know that Jeremy is going to talk about some interesting ideas later this afternoon about what could you do to kind of change this, change the retail mentality. You know, and I don't want to steal your thunder, but I think your comments are spot on. And it's going to be interesting to see how we move that retail part going forward. Let me finish with this. <laughs> You said, Jan, go. Go forth, 
build us a spa star program. Done. Now I need your data. I can't do this without data. So please, you know, Ryan and you know, other people in the audience, if you have access, if you control spas, if you're an owner, if you're a management company, I think this is really cool stuff. But I'm not quote unquote making this up. I, I'm reporting back data and I don't have any data. I'm not a spa guy, I'm a data guy. So take this as a call to arms, take this as a kind request <laughs> to say, hey, please you know, participate. And again, I don't really want your money at the beginning. I think once we get traction and once we get this data out to the investment community, to the hotel owner community, then we can talk about money. But let's just start with data. You know? So I urge you to consider participating in the Spa Star program. Here Thank you. Go.